Hello, welcome to Worship Tutorials. What's up, everybody? Live. You know what? I get comments regularly that say, it sounds like you said, hey, welcome to Worst Tutorials. That say, also. This yeah. is say a worship southern tutorial. accent. I say, I, yeah, I'm from Oklahoma. But we're glad that you're here Country hanging accent. out with us live. Today we got, of course, Fuller, Bradford, and myself. Y'all, hey. Who hey, y'all. Uh, Brian, Brian, and Bradford. We're all BRs at this point. B3. And Bradford's a BM. Welcome to the Brian Wallband YouTube channel. <laughs> oh gosh, let's put that to bed. Also, this is a Come oh, on, my God. We were gonna. Okay, so we were gonna start. It's, it's virtually impossible to control that. No, uh, it's not. No, it's you turn volume. the volume on your phone down. It doesn't do it. Start. It'll do if the video is not playing spawn it first before no, we if, go live. Dude. If the Come volume on. is. Come on, if, Bradford. If the video is not playing, the volume buttons will only do ringer, not volume. So we were we wanted to start with. Um, no, look. This is what you do. You go into you go into your settings like this, and that's your volume. We're talking about how to um, Brad, uh, your, your master Brad over here. They're how trying to, to teach this millennial how to use his iPhone. So these old farts are trying to teach me. <laughs> we wanted to start the chant the the video off by talking about our most embarrassing moments, and I'd like to say the, one of my most embarrassing moments is about ten seconds into every live video when Bradford pulls his phone out. That's embarrassing. And you got the audio coming through. That's pretty embarrassing. So uh, according let's to start Daniel with Thompson, Fuller. classic Whatever. Bradford. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bradford. Mm. Whatever. I could just leave. I'm Talking never. This is my last worship tutorials video ever. There's the door. There's the door. Make sure you shut that door when you leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm taking this McPherson with me. <laughs> most embarrassing moments. Uh, I have plenty of them. I've been doing this a long time. I have probably a top ten of most embarrassing. Mm -hmm. um, I think all of them are equally have their own aspects of embarrassing. Probably, if I was thinking about maybe the most, uh, you know, one embarrassing, we were uh, doing a worship, uh, a vision day. It's like a 10th anniversary at, at DPAC, which is the Durham Performance mm. Arts I Center. Don't, I don't before think I've heard this was before us you. We're, we're here. Oh, um, and it was, you know, full house, 2,500 people. Um, it was a nightmare. Like, we had been setting up since 3 in the heard, morning, and it, it, it came down cool. to the wire. It was, it was just a nightmare. <laughs> Um, but everything got set up. We were ready to go. Second song, our producer started the wrong click track. Oh, no. And so our band was playing <laughs> the right song. Oh, no. But the click was playing the wrong song at the wrong tempo. And so it was... So the, the band was playing the right song to the wrong tempo? Exactly. Um, and what were wrong the two chords. Songs? What were the two songs? I don't know. One, the, the song we were doing was going to lift your name on high. Same key? And the click track was like... With everything or something. No, it was not the same key, so not nothing, the same vibe. Not, it was terrible. Oh, okay. So that took a few seconds to recover from. Um, that was that wasn't most embarrassing. I think most embarrassing was uh, last year we were doing the Wesleyan conference and the entire PA oh, system gosh, shut off. A few that I know about. Entire PA system shut off on me. So it was me, you know, a thousand people and acoustic guitar singing. Oh, it was it. just you. Just, no, no. Oh well, well everything that, else died. Well, I mean. Did, no, no, I had, I, had well, I, a, I had a, I had a band. I played mandolin, but everything got okay. shut off. I was playing mandolin. Everything got shut off, and then so we were having to do like a hymn that I didn't know the lyrics to. So all that was <laughs> shut off. It was pretty bad. That's why you got to memorize. But, but that's not. Lyrics. I mean, I've got stories out the wazoo. But you guys, go ahead. You're not going to share that one. Maybe later. Bradford, Fuller. Now Fuller, I'll, I'll say this. When we were talking about this, Fuller said beforehand, he's like. Well, none of my stories are my fault. It's all because of what other people have done. Yeah. But clearly... well, that You're yeah. at the mercy of other people. <laughs> I mean, sound issues, technical issues, people starting the wrong song. Um, you know. And that's the thing. And that's what makes it embarrassing. I thought you were joking. Is it's not even your fault. I know. It's not even your fault. I have one that was my fault. But go ahead. I know what um, it was. I, I don't... I don't get embarrassed too, too easily. Like, if, if something happens, I just, like, own it. So it doesn't typically bother me. I did have one time when I was still... A lot of the my lead guitar... Venture... Ring... Mm -hmm. Has been... I've been at New Hope for, like, six and a half years. Mm -hmm. It's really only been, like, the last five and a half that I've really been in that lane. I think, like... And to a way where I feel comfortable saying I'm a lead guitar player. Like, that's what I, I do a lot of. And I remember, luckily, I say luckily, it just doesn't diminish students. But luckily, it was in a student service with like 150 students. 
Uh, actually, not that many, about a hundred. Um, <clears throat> and like students don't really care. Like they don't, they don't. <laughs> which is which is appreciative. Anyways, the pastor is wrap, wrapping up, and I'm trying to lay a bed down mm. for like to kind of play something to kind of give some more structure uh, as a uh, as opposed to just like pads. And I hit a big chord, and I blanked on the routing of my board, and for some reason thought that my volume pedal being down would mean that it wouldn't track, and it came through very loud like a blaring oh, bang, yeah. like during like it was supposed to be like because it, I, I thought that it would be not recording i thought or in mm. my mind I, I had a complete brain fart i also had people stand up with me one time and i said will you stand and worship us yeah that's that was classic. pretty embarrassing that's always a, that's, that's a, a classic that's a classic but <laughs> i haven't had really too many let's stand and worship me <laughs> things yeah i don't know that's yes. about all i got <clears throat> All right, well, I have a recent one. Oh, uh, recent. We were doing, uh, Fuller, you weren't, neither one of you guys were there. Uh, we, I was playing at Durham, at our Durham campus, and we were doing one of our new original songs. Mm. Uh, what's the one that this LA is recent? wrote? Oh. Victorious? Victorious. This was two weeks yes. ago. Yes. And so there's a solo in Victorious. Well, first of all, these demos aren't done. So, like, Victorious has no guitar parts in it. So I was completely making up everything that I played, you know. I obviously I practiced beforehand. I like came up with parts for it, mm -hmm. which I didn't really like in hindsight. <laughs> Classic. But anyway, there's a solo section and in in LA asked me like play the kind of play this lead part. And so I I came up with a lead part that complemented there's a keys part in it. Anyway, I go up the, the song what key is that song in? D. Yeah, I I go up in D, but I started playing the solo in C. Oh, no. And so I was off by two frets. And I thought, I was like, the first note that I played, C, was fit. Flat seven. Yeah, like it kind of <laughs> fit, right? It was, it, but like, I had this pattern that I was doing down the neck. Which did not fit. And did not fit. <laughs> and so I thought, Was I'm this on, at rehearsal or was this during the no, service? No, this was first service. Oh, yeah. I'm on the wrong fret, but the note I'm playing works, so I can still save myself. But I couldn't think fast enough on my feet to think, I don't want to go down two frets, I want to go down one <laughs> fret, right? But I went down two frets, and it was a, it was a straight Nick Jonas moment that I had. Oh my gosh. Uh, it oh, was like, like, terrible. And not only that, but like, I, my in-ears weren't, like the mix wasn't, yeah. so I didn't hear, I couldn't hear yeah. very well the, how off I was, yeah. and I stayed on it for a while. Wow. And there's a lot of delay and verb. Mm. But my biggest, my biggest moment, my biggest uh, embarrassing moment. I've talked about it. There's, I have video evidence of it. Both the censored, cussing. both censored and well, now uncensored. Now you just ruined it. And uh, these guys will never let me live it down. It happened years ago, but it was at New Hope Church where I currently am. Well, I used, to, I, I, <laughs> I wasn't fired over this. Brian, I oh, say. I was gonna say Brian is no longer employed. I'm no longer employed, but it's not <laughs> for this. Uh, we were singing Happy Day, and so... Oh, Happy Day. Uh, this is the last time I ever had had ever sung it, and hopefully never will again. I don't think you ever will. Because I have, I have, not For that it's a reasons. bad song, I really like Tim Hughes, who wrote the song, mm -hmm. uh, but this is my memory of this song. So, if you know the mm -hmm. song, the first time you get to the pre-chorus, you sing the words, shout it out, Jesus is alive. The second time shout, you get to the S H O U T. Okay, sing, I shout it. it out. Jesus is alive. The second time you get to the pre-chorus, you sing the words "Sing it out." S I N G. S I N G. Okay. So we get through to the second time around, and I blanked, and I say I started to sing the word "shout." Now I am of the opinion that worship leaders, like if your lyric person is wrong. Like, and they, maybe they're playing, may, like, say you're in the second verse of a song, but they put lyrics for the first verse. Like, I, and you can see what the lyrics are. You should sing what the What's people are singing. What's on the screen, singing, yeah. Because that's what the people are going to sing. Yeah. And if you're singing something else, it's awkward, and it yeah. looks like you're the, you're. Yeah, yeah. you end up looking like you don't know what you're doing. Even yeah. though you might be singing the right lyric. Right. Like, if, if the, the screen is showing something else, you should sing what's on the screen, if you can. Um. So I look at the, we have a confidence monitor in the back, so I can see what's, what the people are seeing. And I look up there, and so I start to say the word, shout it out, Jesus is alive. I look up to see I am wrong, the people are 
seeing the word sing. And so in my mind, I thought, I'm going to sing the word sing. But what my mouth did was sing, was say the first and last sounds of the word shout <laughs> and the middle sound of the word <laughs> sing, <laughs> which when you put them together, it says, it out, Jesus is alive. And which I is a cuss word. S-H sing T, <laughs> right? I don't, can I even can I even spell a cuss word on this channel? <laughs> it's the thing that comes out of your bottom when you I gotta go. I think people get the picture. Mm -hmm. I think you guys <laughs> see what I'm saying. Uh, that's this actually that's happened. terribly embarrassing. This actually happened. Uh, my eyes went about this big. I looked directly right down here at the moment because that's where my campus pastor was, and I thought in my eyes would be like, "Did you hear what I just did?" Mm. And uh, I did have one person come up to me after the service. Her name was Barbara. Barbara. And Barbara was like, Brian, you said it out. Jesus is alive. <laughs> <laughs> and she, goes, she goes, I heard that. I can always count on you, Barb. <laughs> and so the following day at, or the fall, yeah, it was the next day at, at Recap. Because on Monday mornings, do you guys still do Monday morning recap? Yep, looks a little different. But yeah. On Monday mornings, they uh, they we did a recap of every campus. Everyone gets together, and they had the video from Eval. Yes, we did, and we watched it. Pastor Pastor Benji was in attendance. <laughs> He's not typically at recap, is he now? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, okay. Um, so like our our lead pastor over all of our camp or all of our church. Yeah, uh, he was there and. We laughed and laughed and laughed at my expense and just played it multiple times. I have it on my computer still. I have a censored version, which is even funnier. It's even, it's, funnier. It's even funnier. Hey, wait. Let me see if I You're can play pull it. it up. You I sang a can... mouthful, Brian. <laughs> Marcelo says, this? I want to see the video. Okay, wait, wait. Uh, I have it called... Where is it? It's called The Last Time I Ever Sang. Happy, <laughs> Happy Day. Day. Let me search for Happy Day. That's funny. I'm going to see if I can find it. You well, guys you found the it. Nashville chart. I do. <laughs> yes, I have the Nashville chart. I put it somewhere. Maybe I put it like... Uh, I thought I had it on my... <laughs> I had it on my desktop, but it's not there. Mm. All right, you guys talk about something. Okay, else. well, let's uh, dive into some questions yes, here. Yes, let's do it. I'll, uh, I'll try and look for this, and okay. if I find it all... I'll uh, show it to you. Well, guys. we've talked about you uploading it. Are you just opposed to that? I no, I'm not. I am gonna make a video. Called... It's been wasn't it like in a group at some point too? Didn't you post it? Like I did post it in a group. Or I posted it in a Facebook group once, uh, but it's like everyone. It's like a lot of people have a story like that, but hardly anyone has video evidence of it. But I do because I did all the eval stuff myself back then, and uh, I kept it as a reminder that. Uh, you know, it sh happens to people. Yeah, it does. <laughs> like Forrest Gump said. Shoot. Shoot. Um, cool. Uh, here's, here's a question. How long did each of you play music before joining a worship team? Yeah. A long time. For me, it was yeah, a long time. Long time. I, w I started well, guitar when I was in eighth grade. And then... How did I put this? Uh, maybe it was my freshman year of high school. It was my freshman year of high school. I get, did play. I went to a private Christian school, and so we did chapel every Thursday, and I got to play. And then in sophomore year, I actually kind of sort of led worship. I kind of sort of, I mean, like I sang and played acoustic, and this other girl sang too, and like we basically just both sang the whole time, <laughs> <laughs> like unison. <laughs> awesome. Um, and then my junior year of high school, I became like, we called him uh, prefects. So I was a worship prefect. And like, I was the guy who led and one of the other guys did too. So mm -hmm. we switched off. So it was only about a, it was only a couple of years, <clears throat> but I had been playing music a lot growing up. And so music was kind of part mm -hmm. of me. So I just wanted to do it and I went for it. I didn't overthink it. I just jumped in, mm -hmm. and I was like, I want to do this, and I figured out a way to make it happen, and like, I want to sound like this record, and so like, mm -hmm. I figured out how to do it. So, strumming patterns, I'm terrible that at was, teaching strumming patterns. That was patterns. the hardest thing when I was learning. When I, when I first started playing guitar, I didn't understand them, and then the second that my guitar teacher told me to like, pay attention to them, I was like, oh, got it, mm -hmm. and like, so I'm so bad at teaching them. 
Like I can play it and like, but like when I start slowing it down, I'm like, well, this doesn't make any sense anymore. So I'm not so good at teaching like yeah. beginner guitar. I can teach like intermediate advanced electric guitar stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> because like that stuff is like music theory. Like that's how I get that. So I, I'll teach that, but I can't teach like the beginning of guitar because I'm just not very good at that. I think I'm the opposite. I figured it out. I, I, I taught I taught for years. I taught I like beginner doubt. guitar. Yeah, who, yeah like who like that. just got the guitar like from the yeah. top center and stuff. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I learned how to play when I was 15. And my youth pastor taught me how to play. Uh, Wendell Wendell Lowen. Wendell. And uh, he was later my college Bible professor. Interesting story there. Uh, anyway. Uh, he taught me how to play when I was 15 and then basically as soon as I could like play through a song I was like help, I was playing guitar in the worship team like in my little high school youth group yeah. so yeah I, I kind of jumped in as soon as I possibly could and that's why I wanted to learn yeah. was like I want to learn to play guitar mm -hmm. so I can play worship that's music good. with yeah. the team so um, I would say it was a matter of just months before wow. and so uh, that's and that's you know, if you're learning how to play guitar, I would encourage you, um, especially if you're young, but even if you're not young, um, you know, even if you're like about to turn 40 like me, you know, uh, <laughs> and you're just starting out, which, which I commend you and be encouraged. Like as soon as you have an opportunity, as soon as you'll find somebody, you feel like you've got enough ability to play through a song, um, you find a, find a team, a worship leader, a church. Uh, connect and see if you can get plugged in because that is how you will playing with other people and putting yourself in a situation where it's either like this is how I got a lot better at electric guitar over the last few years I was in I was in a position I was just telling Fuller Fuller was like yeah Brian's gonna have to practice for Easter because he's gonna do something new or whatever and I was like I have to practice every week or I make a total fool of myself you know on, on on a stage in front of a bunch of people. So put yourself in a situation where you have to, like, you either have to learn how to do something or you're just going to, like, completely fail in front of a bunch of people. It's scary, but it forces you to, uh, to make the improvements. And most people underestimate how much they can, how quickly they can improve to a yeah. point where you can play on a team. I, I mean, that's you can't what I play had to like, do. You can't play, like, Lincoln Brewster, you know, solos two months I, I in. I still can't. But, but you can, but like you can play for, you can practice guitar for three or four months and get to a point where you can like get through most songs on an acoustic guitar, you know, rhythm thing. So I think uh, that would be make my sure you, um, I can't find this video guys. I'm a little disappointed. We'll, we'll, That's all right. You'll find it. We'll find it for you. Um, I think it's important <laughs> as you're I want to uh, have it involved with the worship team is to take on as many other opportunities as you can as well local coffee houses yeah. um playing in bands playing in cover bands like just ex ex just totally put yourself knee deep in music because if all you're doing is playing Sundays you're not going to you're not going to progress as quick as you could if you were doing something on a Monday night and a Wednesday or whatever so mm -hmm. if you're young and you have the time just get involved in as many things as you can maybe a local school has a opening for like a, a musician for their you know play or whatever but just try to absorb as much musical stuff as you can and all that will will uh make you better yeah I and it's oh go ahead sorry that's one <laughs> <laughs> we started talking at the same time you can't count that as an interruption <coughs> bradford's gonna count the number of times i interrupt him today. somebody thought that i was rude because i interrupted brian but it goes both ways it does. Um, you know, I Brad, when I was... No, <laughs> I, I started, when I got to, I went to Liberty uh, University for worship. I didn't even know that that was doable when I was in high school, and I found out I could, so that's what I did. Um, and I started playing for the church that was also affiliated with Liberty, and I started playing for the youth group. And I was a worship leader, youth. I thought, and uh, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I know I am, but like... I would, they, the guy that was there was a worship leader and he needed a band. Yeah. And so he was like, you know, well, why don't you learn Hosanna? That's the song he asked me mm. to learn. Hill song? Yeah. Or Paul yeah. Hill, uh, Hill song. And he goes, why don't you learn the guitar parts? And that's like how we'll uh, audition you. Yeah. So I spent forever and I, and like, that was hard for me because I wasn't playing lead yet. This was 2007. I wasn't, I wasn't playing lead yet. Um, and this other guy auditioned and he killed it. So he like had him play lead. And so he was like, 
can you be like the designated like a rhythm guy we need a good solid rhythm and he like drenched it in vision and so of course I'm like yeah dude that sounds awesome and like it's not there's important. it's absolutely 100% necessary to have a rhythm guy but like my pride was a little hurt initially but then the way he set it up I was like oh I'm totally stoked to play rhythm guitar because like he gave me a song one day where the rhythm guitar was like the intro and he was like you have to nail this, and I was like, "I'm so ready." Like your love never fails. Kind it of was a, uh, it was Leland's "How Wonderful," I think, yeah. is what the song's called. Um, I can't remember. I can hear it in my head, but I don't. It's been so long. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of something funny. But I did that, and then after two years, the middle school I was with high schoolers. The middle school guy said, "He goes, hey, we're losing some of our guitarists because they're actually gonna be in high school now, and so they're obviously gonna play high school. Would you be willing to come down and play?" Middle, middle school and basically I need you to play lead I'm like oh dude that's not My really me like I'm like I'm like a worship leader who plays electric guitar kind yeah. of um, like you know I said but like if you need help like I'll do it and like I'll try and see what I can come up with but like same thing like and like students students care about different stuff yeah. They just want you to be like real. Like they don't they yes. don't want you to like try to act like you're a big deal. They don't want you to like take yeah. yourself too seriously. So like that's kind of some grace because like students mm. don't like you mess up like they're not going to think about it. An adult even adults don't really care. Like you most people you mess up they're like yeah. okay, people mess up. No one yeah. cares. But like my butt solo no a, one really man, cared. Like adult musicians will be like, "What a loser!" But like, <laughs> if they're in the congregation saying that, they need to be serving and playing anyway. Yeah. So whatever. Um, I have gotten made fun of by musicians who were not serving one week when I did something and whatever. That's a different story. So like, but this guy gave me an opportunity and like, I just played lead guitar and I would like adapt the guitar parts to sound like it, but play it to the point where I could be confident. Yeah. And like, I was one hundred percent fine with that. I had to get myself comfort uh, comfortable with that and confident in that and through that process of like trying to figure out how to learn guitar parts and be better at it. That's kind of how I came up with like this philosophy and approach to how I play lead guitar. Yeah. And it keeps for, uh, I keep reformulating it because I want to find ways that I don't have to think and I don't want to have to like spend hours upon hours practicing. Now there are times where I do that for certain songs. Like we did the last night of worship, BJ Putnam's mm. not be moved. We, we that's got some different stuff. Yeah. It's a fun song, but it, it's got some different stuff I had to learn um, and I had to work on it because it's very, it's not my wheelhouse, but I just found an opportunity and took it and I played almost every single Sunday. I was a full-time student. I worked between like 20 and 30 hours at Starbucks and I served at the church like 20 to 30 mm -hmm. hours a week and I practiced at home and I did not sleep much, but <laughs> I did not die. You know, Hosanna... But did you die? No. That goes... Hosanna, the solo in that song was the first solo I the ever The first heard. solo I ever learned, too. I felt so hardcore. I still play it. It's like the thing that I play. It is. That and, um, like trying and You to, Won't Relent. That was our know, audition song for a long time. to, uh, like, get a guitar, like, make guitar patches and tones when yeah. I make the lead pa yeah. patch, part of the patch. Uh -huh. I played That's All I Ever Played. That's play. funny. Yeah. Uh, here's a question from Ben Garcia. This is a good question. Yes. Uh, my two electric guitar players don't like each other and, ah. treat, and treat it as a competition instead of working together. How do I fix it? That sounds healthy. Well, <laughs> I got some things. Well, is it a competition? At least they're trying to better themselves. I guess there's that. <laughs> do you... So here's a question. If you have the ability... This is kind of like the easy approach. And this is not the one I would suggest right away. Because disunity is not good regardless. Mm. But if you have the ability to put them on two separate teams, that would be the quick and like first yeah. thing I would do to try to eliminate the cancer from spreading as quickly as possible. Because if you think it's just between those two, it is not. Other people are going to see this and they're going to see how you are or aren't responding to it. Ooh, and that's pretty good. Yes, it's not just right about there. it's not just about those two. Your whole team's going to be affected by it. Yep. So if you're if you have the ability to put them on different weekend serving, that's the first and quicker fix, which you then can it buys you some time to talk to them together. And I would just sit them down individually first. And ask them what the beef is and see if you can figure out why if there's something the that's not yeah. where's the beef? If you can see if there's figure something if you can figure something out that's going on, and then I would have them sit in a room together and say like, 
you need to just tell them like this is not how things should be going down no. um and like you two need to hash out what's happening and and just be real like and you be there as the mediator <laughs> But, I mean, this is bigger than just those two guys or those two guitarists. Um, and so it needs to be addressed quickly because then it could affect your team. And it also gives you an opportunity to remind your team that here, here's the plus out of all of this. It gives your, you an opportunity, an easy opportunity to remind your team that the culture that you're trying to set yeah. by reinforcing it like right there. Um, you don't, you know, we want to make sure we're reinforcing culture and vision without problems having to come up but when a problem does come up it gives you an opportunity to reinforce culture and vision um, and ensure that things are the way that your team wants and your church wants and your leadership wants what do you think any other thoughts for it um oh, yeah i, I think that was good stuff there's a lot of good stuff Thank in there you. i disagree with the first that's so part. bad for a 30th, 30th i do disagree old. with the first part i would not split part. them up just uh, splitting them up because i mean the reality is if they don't like each other that's like a serious heart issue and i honestly don't want them on the stage with me worshiping at that point mm. I, I would i would yeah, rather just point. Point. move on uh, yeah because yeah. it's a heart issue and i don't care how good they are uh, uh, guitar players something is not right in their hearts um and so I would immediately take them off the stage and I would immediately meet with them one on one, like Brad said, um, and I would and I would get to the heart of the matter, um, because the reality is if to me, if you split them up, uh, you're only putting a bandaid on it. And, and I think what that says is we value, you know, you as a guitar player more than we value you as a person. So I would immediately take them off the team. Um, you know, that's a good point. Uh, I think a lot of it too might be been your perspective. Like, do they really not like each other, or is it something you perceive? Maybe there's something else going on. So it might not be the yeah. situation you think. But if I know one thing about being in worship for ten years and dealing with musicians, all kinds of musicians, is musicians. <laughs> honestly, musicians can be the biggest freaking jerks um, to each other and and to other people. Um, and so I think the the onboarding yeah. process and the vision casting is so important when it comes to worship. Because Brad said something uh, about unity. Unity is the thing that will destroy. The lack of unity will destroy your ministry, um, and it will hold uh, hostage what you want to try to accomplish at your church and in your community. And so I, I think if it's a bitterness, if it's a attitude thing, I would immediately take them off the team. Yeah. Uh, and then I'd work backwards from there. Um, because, I mean, if you put them on different teams, is the other person going to come to church that weekend and support that person? Or are they going to be in the audience going, Pfft. You know, you know? Um, I don't know how prevalent this would be, but I would, I would imagine that, that that would be a difficult thing for many people to do, to take them off because you're not going to have any... Yeah. you could and risk you, not having you could and, and you, probably in this case and you wouldn't you also might have senior pastors that come to you and are like why why yeah. is there no guitar player yeah. like this is not acceptable yeah you're not doing your job yeah um and so you definitely need to talk to your you know yeah. leadership if you're going to make that kind of a move you need to do it with the backing of your with with like your senior pastor leadership but hopefully they would agree with that yeah i like think if, and if you're in a situation where your senior pastor's like no, having them on the stage is more important. Than, then you got other issues. Yeah, then then you need to then yeah. you need to think about it. because yeah. Fuller, you've said it over and over in videos uh, and in the worship manual that is about ready to come out. We promise. We've talked about uh, it's the launch date is less than a month away. Um, we you talk a lot about like uh, people. You have to value people at yeah who they are over what they can do for you. Mm -hmm. Right, like the person is more important than the fact that yeah. the person plays electric guitar yeah. for you or you know on your stage. Yeah, so we've had this similar situations happen like this. Um, chemistry on your team is super important, mm -hmm. um, and and somebody's got to be able to pull it together. Chances are it's it's usually one person. So you have two electric guitar players. I would imagine one person is probably more of the contributing mm -hmm. factor. But so but if it's literally like two guys that just can't stand each other. Yeah. That's a massive issue um, on a worship setting. I will, I will retract my <laughs> statement. If I had actually, as I'm sitting here listening, I, I would, I, I can honestly tell you that, like, if I was facing this situation, that would be exactly what I would do. You would pull them off. But 
but at the same time, my state, I still hold by my statement. Like if it's like Thursday and you're asking, it's Friday and you're asking this question and they're both playing on Sunday, you need a guitar player. <laughs> Wait till pull, pull, pull one of them off right now. I yeah. stand by that. Yeah. Just yeah. be like, hey, you know what? We yeah. got an issue and we can't, yeah. we can't handle it right now because, right. and there's something that this we say at our church. Phone call to me. Yeah. yeah. That's, hey, hey, they made a difficult situation. <laughs> I um, mean, you know, you definitely can, there's nothing that happens on Sunday that can't be fixed on Monday. I was Monday. just about yeah. to say that. <laughs> Hey, we got a super chat. It'll from kill Walt. the vibe if you try to fix stuff on Sundays. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Just, that's another thing. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. just yeah. address something. Don't if it's bring like, it up Sunday morning. Yeah. Before if it's service. like a small thing. Bad idea. <laughs> if it's like a small thing, like, hey, can you tune your guitar? Address that on Sunday. Oh, of course. Yes. But like, if it's like, if a if a transition was like totally botched and like it ruined everything. Everybody already knows. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't tell your team on Sunday because they need to still have the morale them, yeah. Yeah, to gotta, continue gotta strong. Come back out and do a response yeah. song or something. So finish Sunday morning and then address it afterwards because you want to make sure that they know gold. it's not good. Thank that's you. Worth, I learned it from. I probably learned right it from there. Fuller. Yeah. So hey, we have a super chat from Walt DaCosta. I'm basically a thirty year old Fuller. Uh, I'm highly offended. By this. And uh, thank you, Walt. Yeah, and hey, <laughs> if you want, if you have a question that you want us to answer, he you, did ask. If you will uh, throw out a super chat, we will answer it. Uh, we that's not to say that. that's the only way you'll get your question. No, no, that's answered. no. no. But when Walt asks, when will one of y'all get a Veritas when, guitar? When will one of us get a Veritas guitar? I can say that me probably never. I can say I don't know if I want to say what I want to say. No, don't say what you want to say. <laughs> No, nothing about Veritas yeah. at all. It's I just, just don't need any more guitars. What I was going to say and is... And Brian obviously does, because there's only if, like 38 of them here. If Veritas room. would like to send me a guitar, oh. I will receive All day long. It. All but day long. Otherwise, I'm probably not going to yeah. get one. Yeah. They should... They, they look... I've played one, and they, they look good. They feel pretty they good, but it's you. just... It just didn't speak to me. Now, maybe one of their 503s would speak to me if it was shipped to my house in Nebbin, North Carolina. <laughs> It would absolutely speak to me if it was shipped to me, but uh, I'm really loving I, uh, my two sirs and my Elliot currently. Yeah, and I mean, I don't want to say anything negative about Veritas guitars. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say much. To me, it's not about Veritas, it's about guitars in general. I, like, I, I'm not going to be buying I understand that Casey yeah. is the guy who owns and builds Veritas guitars. Yeah. He's like a super cool dude. Uh, he's a, a believer, and they support you know a lot of worship guys and stuff. And uh, I've heard from I multiple itch people. And I can't get it. Sorry, I look like a weirdo. I've heard from people that I trust <laughs> that I trust their opinion that their guitars are just awesome. But I mean, I don't know. When I first saw a Portlander, that looks uh, sweet. I didn't like it. Oh, I, I was like, like man, that thing is ugly. Um, and it, that that shape, it, I've kind of come around. Like I it's think it's a tele shape. I think they're pretty cool. It's like a weird Telecaster. It's like a, a distorted Telecaster. With uh, you know low output humbucker pickups in it, like, and so uh, that feels like something that would be right up my alley. But I just was not in love with the shape or the headstock. I thought the headstock was kind of goofy looking. I've come around. Like I think they're cool. I think they're cool. Um, I just I don't know. I've never I've never just been like that's a guitar I want. So um, most guitars for me though I need to like use it on a Sunday for me to really get an idea. Yeah. Like I need to use it with my rig doing playing the way I play because yeah. like I'm not gonna play the same yeah. way in a guitar shop where it's like five dudes that work there and me and one other guy with the amp blaring. Like I feel really self conscious. <laughs> yeah. And like, a twelve year old in the back playing Black Sabbath. Yeah. yeah. Well Veritas wouldn't sell them at Guitar Center where a twelve year old uh, would be. Right. So do they have dealers? They actually they, they pulled back. They don't do dealers they're anymore. Most, I don't more think. direct. They're more direct I mean now. now if I like this this sir behind Bradford for example uh, a friend of mine let me borrow his Rick Brand uh, let me borrow his for a while um, he was kind of an interesting story he was dri driving through and he was like can you hold on to my guitars while I'm he drove through North Carolina and then back on his way so I, I held on to a couple of his, his guitars yeah. for a week yeah. and like I played it and loved it and so like if I played one and it just fell in love with it mm -hmm. then sure but yeah. I haven't played one before so Here's a great question from yeah. Jaws of Joey, who also contributed five dollars to our Stoke Fund. Nice, thank you, Joey. How thank do you, Joey? Mine's almost gone. How do you prioritize volunteer health over having a full team Ooh, in church a plant question. with a small number of musicians? That's a great question, and uh, it's awesome that you're thinking there. Yeah. Um, I do think that's that cool, prioritizing what? 
No. Go ahead. <laughs> we don't ans- only answer questions if you donate. The point is, is the whole point of the super chat is it highlights your it question. Highlights yeah. your question. And if you do it, if you we do it, we're not going to ignore you because yeah. you do that. We're trying to be respectful. We're not saying yeah. you have to do that. We're just saying yeah. that's a way to guarantee we'll I'll, see I'll, it. And I'll also say that <laughs> we've answered how many questions, and only two of them have been super. Yes. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. <laughs> that's right. Um, okay, continue. So, but no, they're also usually very good questions because a lot of times in life, the stuff that's free is uh, you don't value it as much. So. Um, how do you prioritize volunteer help? Uh, the fact that you're thinking Just about it is great. A whole deeper. <laughs> I mean, the question, it the the re- reality is, you either do it or you don't. You e- at the end help, of the yeah. day, you either care more about people or you care about what people can do for you. That's the bottom line. Fuller's passionate and about. This. I'm super I'm passionate about. about this. Now that doesn't mean that you can't go through seasons, especially like in a church plant. Mm-hmm. Here's a uh, this happens a lot. Like to me. If someone's serving every week, it's extremely unhealthy for them, for their family, probably for you and for your team. It'll bite you in the butt yeah, in a few months. It will. It will. And it gets old and it becomes a job. And here's the deal. If people are serving every week, how can they come to church and be a part of the church community and be involved in a life group or a small group? And and so we have to holistically take care of people. So I think two times a month is great. Three times a month every is pushing it. But every other week's a great flow. I will say this, though. When you launch a, a campus or a church, you do go through a season where you're going to ask people to, to help you get the thing off the ground. And so I think it's totally appropriate at the beginning to say, hey, can you make a six-month commitment to me? Yeah. You know, Or can you do this for three months while we tra- – you know, maybe you have a drummer that's like, hey, I want to serve every week. And you can say, hey, how about this? For three months – can you serve every week? And at the end of that three months, we're going to move you to every other week. And and don't be afraid to go through a season, but it's got to have a beginning and an end because people do get excited about being a part of something that's going to make a difference. And something and, new. And, and it's fresh, fresh and, yeah. and they're a huge part of it. So there's yeah. a lot of intrinsic value to that. Um, but if you've been a church for nine years, 12 years, and you have the same band every weekend. You're about to step on people's toes. You are. I know, but you know what? It Someone needs to because this is part of the problem with churches. Yes. It, I mean, I can't tell you how many people this have come is, to our church going. who are burnt out because <laughs> oh. some other church made them serve nine weeks, nine months in I, a row. Every, almost every single new volunteer. So when I was on staff at Garner, yep. I was in charge of... Uh, of volunteer assimilation, like building teams of mm-hmm. assimilating. And I talked to, I mean, it seemed like dozens of, like all, almost every single volunteer that I onboarded had a story um, that was, and the story went like this. I was at this church and I served every single weekend. Yep. And it was like, they were so gun shy about talking to me. Even yeah. Because they just assumed that churches burn people. That's churches how it goes. People. It does. They do. And it's like that you know, don't do it. Well, there's a spiritual piece to it. It, Like if you make, if you ask, not make, yeah, they're adults and they decide right for themselves. But the reality is, uh, there's an obligation that comes with it. And if you think that God is not going to bring you what you need to do your ministry, it's a a spiritual fear. And so by saying, Hey, I got six people. I'm just going to use them every, every week you're actually being a very lazy leader because you should be yeah. recruiting and finding new people because it's not about needing, Not I always say like this, God doesn't um, use us to complete a task. He uses the task to complete us. And so if you have the same drummer that's serving every weekend, you're robbing o- other drummers of the opportunity for them to serve the kingdom. And so we have, we have a responsibility as leaders not to make a song sound great, but to actually put people in a place that they can grow in their faith, that they can use their gifts for God. And so, and, and, and it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of energy and a lot of intentionality to do that, yeah. to recruit people, to train them and to delegate the responsibilities. Yeah. And if you're new, if you're not doing that, you're missing out that on is, the joy of ministry. And it's probably one of the, I'm, I was told when I started at New Hope, your biggest job as a worship leader is building teams. Yeah. That is your number one priority is building teams. And most worship leaders don't approach it that way. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's at New Hope. I think that's any church. Yeah. As a worship leader, you're a pastor and your job is to build, is to recruit and build and empower a group of people 
to lead your church in worship. Your job is not to play guitar and sing in front of people. And a lot of that's people, part of your job. That's a small part of it. But that, it, but you have to build a team. That is probably ten percent of my job. Is yeah, yeah. Actually, doing what I this thought is, I got hired to do. People don't believe you when you say that. Yeah. That's the thing. They're like, They're like, oh, you just oh, work no, on no, no, Sundays. No. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, and, and and another common response is, yeah, but your church is big. You know, what about small churches? Not our, our campuses. Yeah, are big. Uh, um, half our most of our campuses are hundred people, 150 people. The bottom line is as the leader, you set the tone, you set the temperature. Whether your church is 17 people or 5,000 people, it's your job to find musicians, to integrate them into your system, to train them and equip them. God will provide them from some of your congregation, but the reality is a lot of musicians you find are going to be, oh, you got a buddy that plays guitar, or I was at Guitar Center and I met this kid playing keyboards and he's a Christian and he doesn't play at a church. Like, it takes a lot of active recruiting. So yeah. size of your church has nothing to do with your vision and your philosophy of how you're going to treat your musicians. Um, and I do. I think sometimes I, I tell people at small churches, if you just absolutely cannot find musicians, take one weekend a month where you just do an acoustic yes, set and give everybody that. the week off and just you and your guitar. Suck it up and make it happen. Make it special. Make it unique. <laughs> but if you don't, you what happens is over time, your musicians not only get burnt out, they leave your church. Yeah. N- very t- few times does they a musician leave. step down and then stay involved right. in your church. And the evidence of that is how many people that I talked to and you talked to and Bradford have you talked to that said, I came from this church where they completely burned me out. Yeah. And then when you leave, guess what? That church gets mad. Yes. Because it's like, oh, you're leaving but us it's now? Their fault. And, and a, it's it all and rises they, and, and falls and on leadership. And half the time they try and guilt trip the person. Yeah. Like how many... Uh, Joshua Abbott, hey Joshua, says, Joshua. <laughs> says, Brian, you need to move closer to the mic because Fuller's like 20% no, louder. Dude, Fuller's I'm so loud. loud right I get loud when I get passionate. <laughs> He's just very loud right He's now. He's yelling. I mean, it's just... And, now, and well, here's the thing. I do a lot of videos with Fuller. I'm oh, sorry, Brad. <laughs> no, no, I was uh, interrupting you. I've been trying. I to think speak. it's about even right now. Brad. I've been trying to speak on this topic since it started. <laughs> this and is you two are dominating it? it. So when Fuller and I make videos, Fuller, your voice is a uh, higher timber than mine, and it cuts through. <laughs> what is that? The right word? Higher pitch? Yeah, yeah. And it cuts through. That's why you're a better vocalist than I am. It sits in the mix. I wouldn't way say better. that. Uh, I would. <laughs> anyway, so it's like Fuller's voice is always louder than mine because it's a higher, it, it, it's it's a better frequency. Anyway, what were you going to say, Brad? <laughs> I, I, I see a lot of people are like on the other side of the fence here. I'm seeing a few comments and they're like, yeah. I've served every year since I was knee high to a grab topper and <laughs> now I have cataracts and can't see at 80 years old. That's like what everybody's saying here. Um, I have seen those, yeah. I, I get that. Um if you are the 1% of people who are like that, I, I just was talking about when I was in college, full-time student, 30 hours at Starbucks, 20 to 30 hours serving in the church. Mm-hmm. I didn't want a week off. I, I'm a rare breed too. Like I, I loved it. I soaked it up. Like it's, it was it like wor- leading worship, playing music, playing guitar. It's my passion. It's my hobby. It's my calling. It's my job. It's my side job. It's like my third job. Like everything I do revolves around it. Like it's what I love. Um, but some of you may be getting a romanticized view of like, you're like, I got people who do this and they love it and they're never going to stop playing or whatever. The problem is, is when it does catch up to you, if it does catch catch up to you again, we're talking like the 1% that may, this may not apply to the problem that I've seen is that it'll catch up to somebody. And in an instant, they go from being passionate to being burnt out and never wanting to play for you That's ever right. again. And it's like a switch. And like it just it like it just happens. It comes out of nowhere because they're gonna realize that like they'll look back exactly like I just said. I'm a full time student. I work thirty hours. I've played every single Sunday and I haven't had a week off. Yeah. And like it'll catch them off guard and like it's your job as the worship pastor to pastor them to resting. Yes, it's it, not yes. about it's it's not about Somebody what preach. you can get from them. Like you're gonna have to make a call and say, you know what, we have six people on our team. It would be great to have six people every Sunday. Let's do, let's divide it in half. Let's divide it in half and do every other week. And let's do acoustic sets every week for right now or change it up. Or once a month. Or once a month, at least something. It's just you. As the worship leader, you need to take the initiative because what you're going to do is create space 
and you're going to leave your volunteers wanting more and you're going to have them looking forward to the next weekend they serve and they're not going to want to miss the weekends they serve and yeah. they're going to want to make the weekends they do serve to be amazing because they only get to do it twice a month. And then you're going to have people who attend your church and say, hey, I noticed your teams are a little slim. It's like they may be more likely to jump up and say they're willing to serve because they see a smaller stage and you're, they see a need and they want to fill it. So I, on the same way, like I started leading worship when I was like about 14 or 15 in, in high school and led like every single Thursday. Yeah. And then when I got to college, I led, I took five years at school, um, beat that, it took five years to do four years worth of education. I, I, I at least see it. I took five myself. <laughs> I, but, but I double but, majored but again, in chemistry and biology. Yeah, you're, uh, <laughs> I, I'm the opposite. I, exactly <laughs> what, what I said though. What you Bradford? Exactly okay. what I said though. I was working full-time I, student. I, like I, I like that was, that changed my perspective. But like since I was 15, I can count on three fingers how many Sundays I missed. I've missed a year in fifteen years, yeah. um, and that's because I know this is my calling. Mm -hmm. But I am not gonna let somebody on my team. Like I love the people on my team way too much yeah. to like see them all of a sudden like stop wanting to be a part of our team and our yeah. church. And I'm like, I'm. You gotta see the big picture. You gotta yeah. see the thirty thousand foot view. Um, and it's hard because like. There are people who they just bring so much when they're on the stage, mm -hmm. and like you don't want them to not be there, but yeah. it allows room to grow. Yeah, um, it allows room for to it allows people to get better and to step up to the occasion. It allows other people to see a need, all that. Yeah, I want to add two things to this conversation. This is a very important. This conversation. is good stuff right here. Um, and I'm going to come at it from a different perspective, because I am now a volunteer. We did a Sunday vlog a few weeks ago yeah. where Fuller and I talked. Uh, two years ago, I quit my job at this church. He got fired. So I was full time. <laughs> two years ago, I stepped away because from of the that story role. we told earlier. <laughs> I stepped away from that full time role yeah. to to work uh, to to do worship tutorials full time. So for the the next year and a half, I led worship on a contract basis every weekend. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I was sort of an employee, but for the past six to eight months, I haven't been employed at all, and I've just been a volunteer. And I have served almost every single weekend in that time. And it, and it was because I, I, a, I, I want to be involved in leading worship because it directly affects my full-time job now at Worship Tutorials, right? If I'm not a worship leader or at least involved in it, then who's going to listen to me talking about worship leading? Exactly. Uh, two, I love it. And I want to, I just want to be a part of it. Yeah. And I feel so connected to this church. But so I say that all to say for six months, I've, I've played guitar or sang or led every single weekend. So I have been that guy. And I've seen all these comments that say, I've been serving my church yeah. for 20 years and I've, I've been there every weekend, which is to be commended. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and I've also seen comments that say, uh, you're a mega church. This applies to you, not us. So I'll address the first one. Um, the other day I was talking with my wife and I said, you know, I think I'm going to ask for a weekend off next, this month in March. And she, and she doesn't, she's never, I, I know she feels this way, but you know what she said to me? She said, it will be nice to have you with us on a Sunday mm -hmm. and go to church as a family. Mm -hmm. So what you may not realize um, if you serve your church every single weekend is and your family might not say this to you, but they're missing you mm -hmm. as and I think this is especially it's good stuff, right? Yeah, here. well, and they're missing you with with them as a family. Your family on is a your Sunday. first ministry, right? And so, if you serve your church every single weekend, you're giving yourself to your church and you're removing yourself from your family. That's and good stuff. and when she told me that, because I and I told her, I said, and I also it also takes me away on Wednesday night. So on mm -hmm. Wednesday. I have a five-year-old, and on Wednesday, Angie takes care of him and puts him to bed, and I don't even see him on Wednesdays, basically. Mm -hmm. I see him in the morning, say goodbye, and that's it, and he's in bed when I get home. And, she, and so, like, uh, she just said, it'll be nice for you to be home on a Wednesday evening, and it'll be great for us to go to church as a family on Sunday. And it kind of told me, it's like, and I told her, I said, I love going to rehearsal on Wednesday. I love it, because I get to play in a band with people sure. that I love, and... Yeah music that I love and I love serving on Sundays. It's just awesome to be a part Why of what's going on. Serve yeah. with this guy that you love. 
I will, but you got to pull me away from L.A. Yeah. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> sure. But what you don't realize is you him. are taking away from your family. Mm-hmm. And and I and I think that that's I, I don't think you should yeah. do it. And to clarify too, Brian is the, an exception because t- t- Brian's you're the only person on our team that actually serves every week. And the yeah, reason that is does. is because it is an important part of your life and worship and tutorials I told and stuff. I yeah, to. exactly. And so and the other thing is when you take that weekend off, and there was no question. It's like sure. Yeah. You need a week. Yeah, well, go for and you it. know go what I did? It. Yeah. You know what I did? It's not I, like, oh man, are you serious? No, I looked at the schedule and I yeah. told LA, I said, here are two weekends where you have other guitar players yep. and you're not going to miss me as much on these. Yep. The other thing is um, the comment about like you're a mega church and this applies to you and not us. Fuller mentioned this. Our campus, we're a multi site church and every campus is sort of autonomous when it comes, is autonomous when it comes to the worship team. So when I was in Garner, we were a church of about 300. And our worship team came from that church of 300. Came from, we didn't, you know, every once in a while, like, hey, you know, one of the volunteers from the Durham campus, the large would come, campus, fill, would come fill in. But it was like our teams were made up of people from that campus. Brad, you've been at campuses that are probably smaller, more more like the one, one to 250 range, right? Yeah, I've always had a bar of people. Yeah, but but you also I I'm a relational we've been, guy, so I've but always... we've been in in churches even in our church but we've been at campuses where there are between a hundred and two hundred people and mm-hmm. we we practice this it can be done yeah okay that's all I have to say about I that's like stuff, we yeah. are all extremely passionate about yes this and I do want to add one thing uh, a scripture for us uh, that I think mm-hmm. about a lot Second Kings four because we talk about you know finding people and not having enough people and 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 this is the scripture of the widows. Uh, jar. Um, and uh, basically what happens is um, uh, the widow's husband dies and, and her creditors are coming to collect, right? And she, so she has no money. Elisha says to her, how can I help you? Tell me what do you have in your house? Okay, so what do you have in your house right now? That's And, and uh, she says, uh, we have nothing here. All we have is a small jar of olive oil, and so which is valuable, right? Mm-hmm. Very valuable. Uh, Elijah says, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask just for a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind your sons. Put uh, Pour oil into all the jars as each is filled. Put, put it off to the side. She left him, shut the door behind her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. Basically, the oil kept multiplying because she had these empty jars. Over. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another jar. But he replied, there are no jars left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man uh, of God, go sell the oil and pay your debts so your son can live out on what's left. So the bottom line is this. If you don't have empty jars, you're not going to receive the oil that God has for you. Mm. And the oil is people. And if you're using the same team every weekend, guess what? You have no empty jars. Yeah. And so there becomes this fear that you're going to leave and then I'm going to have this empty jar. Guess what? That empty jar is what God's going to fill up for you. And so if you hold on to the people that you have so tightly that you're in fear, well, if we get rid of this guitarist or if we let this guy have every other week off, then I have this void. Guess what? That's where God starts to show up and it starts to fill those voids. So don't lead out of fear. Lead out of the expectation that God's going to give you what you need. So yeah. that's my scripture for that. And also the the same kind of thing applies to like like Gideon when he has like what three thousand? Yeah. Three thousand or thirty thousand. Twenty thousand, I think. 000. Yeah. Um and then like he has him cut him down twice to so like three hundred or something. Yeah. He goes, It's the real three hundred story. The real three hundred <laughs> battle of three hundred. Pretty 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 hardcore too, yeah. because then like the jars and like, like the torches. Lee, Lee is and so I dope. Just got nothing on Gideon. I would love to see uh like a a, a movie adaptation of that story that would be there are well that'd be a cool hollywood story. is starting to do it they are with anyways Noah and, and yeah of course yeah, they no. don't get all the details right well that's true but uh, like no, they take it as like like pray about what god would have you do to grow your team um because yeah he could be the, like you have to hold your team members in with an open hand because first off, then you just kind of look ridiculous when you're like begging and pleading for people to stay. Like you kind of lose credibility, <laughs> yeah. And like you look kind of like a jerk. But like at the same time, like 
you're leading in faith, knowing yeah. that God is giving you the exact people that you need, and he will give you the people that you will need, and, and all of that. And then one thing that, just to kind of recap, or not recap, but like a side note to what you said about mm-hmm. your family. So I heard somebody say this one time, and it like changed my perspective on so many things. Um, and I, I'm not going to say it the most fluently and the most brilliantly, but the idea still stands. At the end of the day, any decision that you make that... It has to do with your job or the ministry you serve in or your or your church or maybe you do like work for a church. The decision you make in that capacity doesn't affect your family as much as you might think. It's like the opposite because at the end of the day, you make a decision, you tell your job, you tell your ministry what you're doing, and you go home to your family. They're the ones that deal with the decisions you don't make to come home to them. Um, and so I told you, it's not going to be very fluid. I'm not going to say this very well. But basically, it made, my, made me think about it. It's like, I come home to my wife every single night. I, I will eventually come home to more than just a wife whenever mm. the Lord sees fit. And I'm going to come home to them <laughs> the every your, single your night. Quivers in the air. And <laughs> I, am, I, do not, I do not want to come home to people who dislike me, who are, who are upset with me or about a decision. Or resent, resent the church. Yeah. yeah. And so they're the reason, they're the way that I focus my decision making. My yeah. wife is the way I focus my decision making. Yes. And so when your you're, family is your what you just minister, said. You said it. Yeah, and what you just said about Angie saying it'll be nice to go to church with you or however you want. And she it. doesn't. She's yeah. very supportive. Of oh, absolutely. Her. All but, of our wives are yeah. supportive. That's why we are here but doing this God. right Praise now. Praise God. Just Praise a, God. It was just a reminder. Yeah, a yeah. good reminder that you need to figure out how you can serve. Because also it goes down. Man, we could talk about so many things. Love languages. Yeah. Like, what the heck is your wife's love language? If it's spending time with her, you will earn <clears> massive <throat> points if you go to church with her. <laughs> Yes. Or if you buy her coffee as you go to church, if she's a good <laughs> person. Uh, let's, uh, let's answer this. This, hot this topic. This topic is amazing. Joey, that was good. Uh, but there are tons. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a, a lot. There's more a stories. super chat. There's a big super chat by the Runter. The Runter. And uh, let's talk about this. And then after we talk about this, our time is about up. Yeah. Mm. So we're, we're going to start. A lot up. of good questions. Brad though. and I are going to eat cheeseburgers, Fuller. Uh, I am going to, uh, I got both my babies at the house and my wife, and uh, we are, uh, speaking of family time, Mm -hmm. we're going to go have lunch, and then I think I'm going to pressure wash the deck. Ooh. I think. He He needs it. You need to pressure wash that? You just built it. Fuller is, you are like Clark Griswold. (laughs) You serious, Clark? (laughs) Just real nice, Clark. Real (laughs) nice. Just I will say all the dysfunction. I will say this: There's so many great questions in the Boy, chat. And such a family man. We took a, a massive turn on this, but this was a critical discussion. I mean, we can no, talk this about this every really time. Good. This yeah. is what churches need to hear. Um, but there are a lot of great questions. Maybe there's a way that we can uh, either, uh, you know, do a, another chat uh, or maybe move this over to the Facebook worship leader page or something. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of good questions. I don't want you guys to feel like we ignored you or didn't answer because right. there's a lot of good yeah. ones in We here. just got going on a topic yeah. that we're all very passionate well, about. Well, people are seem to be liking it. Maybe we'll shoot another video just answering all these questions and post it or something. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, but here's here's the, the super chat question. Do you guys have any advice for youth ministry? Uh, I do. I help out at a small church, and we have about 10 youth per Sunday. So I'm interested in what your thoughts are since we are starting from the ground up. Can I take this? Yeah, please. So I have experience in this coming from two angles. One, I was a youth pastor. Uh, before I moved here to North Carolina, my first job in ministry was as, as a youth minister. Um, and two, after I, after I left my role at Garner, part of what I did at New Hope was I led worship for this coffee house service, which was like a acoustic... Uh, lower intensity venue uh, that happened at the same time as our main service. But before that, I led worship at our church for the junior high students. So you got me, this aging, balding, overweight guy, <laughs> leading worship for junior high kids. I remember that. Here's the thing about uh, that I learned about that when I led worship. Um, kids, and you, met, you said this earlier, kids just want you to be real, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. They just want you to be, and, and especially junior high kids, They'll do what you do. They will model you. Mm-hmm. And they'll be excited about the things you're excited about. Which, that I, you know... Well, unless you're that's ex- excited about learn. something lame. <laughs> one time I told them to like come away from gutters their, or something. Yeah, one time I told them that they needed to come away from their video... What did I say? I've told you this story. 
You guys need to get. You need to stop playing. We have video game consoles set uh-huh. up. Your gaming machines or something. <laughs> Called them like so it made me feel super old. Well, you but, did that uh, on purpose. It made me feel as old as I am. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so they're gonna be excited about the things you're excited about. They're gonna engage at the level you engage. So, I. I, I think it's really important when it comes to worship with students is you need to, one, you need to invest in relationships with them. Mm-hmm. And you said you're starting from the ground up, so you have 10 kids. That's good. You That's need a to, life group. Yeah. You need to know all 10 of those kids, and you need to know their parents. <laughs> yes. You know, yeah. Right? And you need yeah. to, and you need, yeah. and, and it needs to be obvious to them that you care about them yeah. as kids. Yeah. Be involved in their lives. If you're in a situation where you can go like, you know, if they're involved in sports or, or events, you know, things with their, with their, I grew up in a sports town. I grew up in a small town in Oklahoma, so it was like, I don't want your foot, life. Football mm. was, I don't want yeah. your life, Dad. Playing football at West Canaan High was your life. It was your dream, oh, Dad. That's good. Okay, that's good so that's the first thing. Like, be involved in their lives. Be excited about the things you want them to be excited about. And when you lead worship, be excited. Lead with a lot of energy. Yeah. Um. And so, yeah, and, and the other thing I would say is if any of those kids are show any interest, <laughs> any, in, any interest, any interest yeah. in music at all, there's your band, <laughs> get them plugged in, yeah. like make, get them involved. Even if you've got three out of your 10 playing in the band and seven, <laughs> seriously, like singing, yeah. g- make that happen because, yeah. um, <clears throat> they're going to want to, I, yeah, I was that good. kid. They're going to want to be involved, especially if they're. You know, and teach them. Like you have a great opportunity if any of them want to learn how to play, plug them in, teach them. So those that that's my advice. Um, invest in them as as people. Be excited about the things you want them to be excited about, and yeah. then get them plugged that's good. in. That's yeah. good. And like some kids, also students. I'm trying to I'm trying to be respectful. They're students, <laughs> anyways. Um, like maybe. Like the they did, they don't even know what worship is. So figure out how to <clears throat> maximize your time of worship. Like maybe it is just sitting in a circle in chairs and an acoustic guitar singing because they just don't they just don't know yet. Uh, yeah. And maybe that's actually more effective because it's a little more not polished and it's not like a it, yeah. it's like you can be more raw. Like you can you can do something. You can kind of intermingle like teaching and worship. Um, you know, so just find a way to that like they're going to connect. Like if it works and it's not contradictory to scripture, mm-hmm. <laughs> then try it. Why not? There was another super chat. Uh, yeah, this single is a, coils. This is a quick and easy question. Noiseless answer. pickups when using single coils live. I use single coils all the time, and none of them are noiseless. I will. They don't have to be, but I did. I did yeah, play you places. Were in a situation. Yeah, and it was like unbearable. Even humbuckers made power. noise. Yeah. And it was yeah. it was the power. Yeah. I just paid attention to my volume pedal and like yeah. paid attention to what I was doing and found ways to adapt. Um, I think yeah, it's very situational and a lot yeah. of it has to do with the power in your yeah. in your um, yeah. building. And so I you know if you run if every weekend you're All playing a single coils if actually. you're playing a telly or a strat or something and every weekend it's just yeah. like all the time. It may yeah. be worth investing in noiseless pickups for you. I would go with the Area 58s. That's what I have in all yeah, my strats. They're, they're noiseless technically. They're not the Fender noiseless, which I don't like because the Fender noiseless yeah. are really like they take a lot of high end out. Yeah. But the uh, the Area 58s and the Area 56s are noiseless and they sound amazing. And those are Demarzio. Demarzio yeah. makes. Demarzio, really yeah. Uh, I do have one question. We got to answer this. What's that? We got uh, and then we got to go. Thomas Curling says this: How do you approach a pastor who is against auditions for the worship team? <laughs> is the reason because you got to let them know how important they are. <laughs> is the reason because what he so thinks everybody should be included? Yeah, because that that is a uh, that's understandable from a a pastor a pastoral. Yeah. yeah, but I would say a way you can not trick. <laughs> but you can get your pastor to be on board is to discuss the standard of excellence for your church mm. and what that looks like and what he thinks it should look like on the team. Um, and just and like because you're in the situation, explain that maybe maybe you need to maybe you need to discuss like a standard of excellence and you need to say that this brings up a, uh, this question. Can we talk about both? Um, yeah. Because auditioning is not merely about is this person good enough to play on the team? The way we also use it, the way I use it, is what what can what does this per- person bring, and how can I maximize their gifts the most? Like 
I had a girl uh, when we when I was at the Sanford campus who like she could lead and it sounded great, but like we did um, and we're not going down this road. But we totally did a Carrie Underwood song one day, and I knew that she was the girl to sing that song because I auditioned her, and I said we have them do, we typically yeah. have them do two things, um, especially vocalists, play this whatever song we're asking you to play, and then like I always did like what is a song that you would absolutely slay if you were doing like karaoke or if you were playing with a band and you wanted to do a song that was like this is a song I sing the absolute best or play the absolute best or the style I do best playing or singing, whatever it is. Um, and she did like a country song. I don't remember what it was now, but I was like, yes. So we did Carrie Underwood, something in the water. Mm. Yeah. One thank Sunday you for, for baptism. Thank you for clarifying. We did not do Jesus take the wheel. Yeah, we didn't. No, we <laughs> did. We did something in the water for baptism. And we, we talked Which about baptism. It was a cool moment. It was awesome. And like, she slayed it because I auditioned her. Also and I not had a music her, song. To it is not. <laughs> and I auditioned her and I knew exactly what her wheelhouse was. Um, because we, we yeah. and like, we were able to capitalize on that. We were able to make a moment that could have been just great. Yeah. Amazing. Like it was, it was so powerful. It was so killer. So I would ask the pastor too. Are there any other areas of the church that you do any screening or any inner? Would you let any random person lead a life group? Would you let let any, any random person, person with the kids? watch your children and your children's? <laughs> now I ask that really being serious because yeah. he may be the kind of guy where it's just everybody just jump in and do stuff, um, and that's um, that's okay. Um, but from a music perspective, your worship's not gonna be what it could be. So. <laughs> I would maybe try to figure out, maybe the word audition scares him, maybe the process of audition scares him. Um, maybe you yeah. could just be like, you know what, I agree, I'm not going to do auditions, I'm just going to do some private screenings, <laughs> uh, or I'm just going to um, do some interviews, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but I tell you one thing, like, that wouldn't be for me. <laughs> if, uh, if um, you know, if I had to be in a place where I couldn't audition or at least screen people, I would not want to be part of that ministry. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it's probably a conversation with your pastor. There's probably just some either fear or uh, a lack of awareness. Yeah. And I think a good, healthy conversation of where you want to go, your vision for the team and why this is an important part of the process. I, I My guess is that a normal human being that loves people would, would be willing to meet you halfway at least. Yeah. So... Yeah. All right, guys, we got to sign off here All right. pretty quick. I'll say this. There is has been ton. I've been, Fuller's been monitoring comments. I've been trying to glance down. Uh, it's as been a, good today. Uh, yeah, lots of comments. Tons of questions from a lot of you. Um, we have two Facebook groups, WT Leaders and WT Tone. So the leaders, the leaders group is more worship leader focused. The Tone group is more gear focused. Links for those groups are below in the description, I think. Fuller, can you confirm that? Uh, they yeah. should be. Um, I, think yep. I think they show up PMW in every video. Gear group. Yeah, yeah they show up the in every video that has been uploaded one. recently. So, um, yeah, feel free to engage in those groups yeah. and ask more questions. You know, um, today we talked mostly about uh, leadership. And I think last week, Brad and I talked about guitars. And so, you know, these live videos, we're going to... Uh, <laughs> in these live videos, we're going to try and kind of flip flop so maybe one video we'll, we'll we'll talk more about worship leadership and the next live video we'll talk more about gear because there have been a lot of questions about both yes um and, and you can tell that the three of us are are all very passionate about leadership yeah i mean and, but we're also very i mean we love gear too you look mm. at this room is full of guitars so yes. <laughs> and if you got there's some gear questions that like literally would take like zero time to answer and that's part of the reason why they're not always answered here because we talk about a lot well, of those kind this, of questions and a this lot. video went we right. focused on leaders so we well, just yeah. kind of kept but it in that vein my so. my point here is like a lot of these questions you're asking like we can answer pretty quickly. Just I try to I try to stay on top of the WT Tone oh, account. I see what you're saying, yeah. Um, and even on my account on Instagram, B and Mitchell, and then WT Tone, and we try to keep up with yeah. both of those and answer questions. I, I I love answering, and sometimes it's just a matter mm -hmm. of providing a perspective that you haven't thought about. And like I've been talking to a handful of people lately who I like have tried so much stupid stuff. I've wasted <laughs> so much time and money that I'm actually of a of a resource to people. I can actually help. So yes. like benefit it's all this Bradford's stupid time with, I wasted on stuff with this wasted time and money you don't have to you don't have to so um we always try our best to answer that too but yeah. like somebody has fractal or helix 
Both. Yes, both. Either one. Like those kind of questions. How much money do you have? How to much spend? money do you have? Yeah, it's all about budget when it. Comes and how to cool do you want to be? <laughs> nah. <laughs> what, what do you got? What do you got? A serious question. Helix or practicing a lot? Oh, to helix. Boo! <laughs> Boo! <laughs> yeah. Uh, that new firmware is gonna. New make, guitar or yeah, practicing two hours a day? Coming out with. Uh, yeah. By the way, we, nobody knows when. So uh, it's just like spring is what they said or something. Um, it's going to make you sound better, right? It's going to make go. you play the notes better. That's right. There's a balance. That's not how it works. Well, there is a balance. <laughs> I got a new All guitar right. and I love it and it's inspired me to play more and I've practiced more. Well, that happens. Inspiring is But good. that doesn't mean yeah. you should go buy a guitar every time you don't want to play. You should practice. You know what else can inspire you though? Cheeseburgers! Those, but like... Segway. Like, See ya. Bye. Le- I'm going to end it. Learn, mm-hmm. Learning how to do a really great setup on your guitar That's gonna can be. make That's your guitar too. play completely different and be very inspiring to you. Yep. And uh, there's a free course that is available at Worship Tutorials totally free. that I did. And I just have a free loop About theater. how to so, set up works. guitars. Or, if you're Bradford, you just give me... Uh, the guitar, and I'll set it up. Brian takes Fuller my guitar, never, and he's like, Fuller's this is never set up given terribly me a reference. guitar to set up. But I'll I take mine to Mark Hinn. Yeah, well, you know, he's a pro. <laughs> I've got one that you, you, if you want to work on a guitar, he doesn't I have a waiting set list. Up for me. Mm-mm. I don't Can have a waiting list. Can you set up list. a Bigsby for me? Uh, yeah, I've done a few of those. I don't have a waiting list or a fee for you, Fuller. P- fantastic. I mean, <laughs> all right, see you guys. Thank you so much for Be hanging blessed. out with us today. We'll see you next Somebody's Friday. Somebody's from Perth. It's like the Boney Bear song. So Australia. killer. Yeah. Uh, hopefully oh, we'll be live again next Friday. Yeah, We're going to try and make it a regular thing. We say that all the time. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes life gets in the way. a string of illnesses. Oh, uh, yeah. For a while, like one like of the three of us was Everyone around here got, it got the bad. food oh my or strep throat or whatever. Anyway. Something. We're back. Uh, so we'll see you next time. Yeah, Bye, Bye-bye.